Have you ever wondered how time value of money works and how to set up an equation to calculate it and how to set it up into Excel? Well, that's what we're gonna to cover today. So in today's video, we're going to cover first the concept of time value of money, then why compounding is important. We're gonna go through uh, different formulas and explanations on paper to understand how it all works. And then we're also going to see how we could input it into Excel to uh, make things easier for us so that we don't have to always take out a piece of paper and pen and figure it out. So what's the time value of money? Well, the whole idea behind the time value of money is that money today is more valuable than money tomorrow, the same amount of money. So if I were to ask you, can you loan me $100? You'd probably say, well, when are you gonna pay it back? And if I tell you like in a year, you'll say, well, how much will you pay me back? Unless we're really good friends and you're trying to help me out because you think, well, at a later point in time, I'll help you out as well. Typically, if you ask a bank or anyone else, they'll wanna receive some level of interest. And the whole idea behind that is there's different concepts that align. There's the idea that things typically cost more and more over time because of inflation. You think about how much things cost when you're a toddler compared to how much they cost now. And also the whole idea that if you use your money effectively, you could deposit into a, like a savings account or mutual fund or uh, ex exchange traded fund, you could generate interest. So that $100 now is more valuable to you than $100 in a year's time. So to understand the whole idea of time value of money, we have to kind of figure out how we can calculate it. So if I think now, let's say we're in a present value, I have $100. Well, a few things we have to establish to understand the, how much this value will change over time. We have to establish an interest rate, we have to establish a certain period, and so on. So let's say I have an interest rate of 10%. Well, after a whole year's time, this $100 will be $110 in a year's time, so in one year's time, okay? And then if I go in two years time, well, some people would think that this $100 will now be worth 120 because I gained $10 the first time and I'll gain $10 again the second year, but actually that's not the case. This $110 will now become $121. And why? Because we're using 10% of what we've had money on. So 110, 10% of that is $11. And you add that to the 110 to get 121. So this is the first instance of compounding. The first idea behind it is this idea that if you take this amount of money and you kind of go over time, the value gained goes up and up and up over time because you're not only earning interest on the initial amount, but you're earning interest on the interest earned in the previous periods as well. So the thing that we have to keep in mind in this process here is how often are things compounded? So here we've done it on a yearly basis, but in reality, it could be semi-annually, it could be monthly. So if I think about the idea of splitting this up, I could say, well, I have 100, I'm still earning 10% per year, but I'm compounding this every six months. So after six months, I would have half of that 10%, so I'd have 105. And then after a year's time, I would earn 5% on that 105. If I were to calculate this, we'll do it on Excel in a second. It's just gonna make it easier so I don't have to pull out a calculator. You'll see that this amount here becomes larger than if it was the case when you're compounding it once per year. And this is gonna be important when we look at mortgage calculations because we'll notice that it's easy to kind of make errors when you're putting everything into Excel compared to how things actually work with the banks. And it's often based on this slight compounding difference. So we'll keep this whole concept in mind. So now let's jump into Excel and see how this works. So in Excel here, you want to uh, have a situation where you have a, a certain amount of money. So you could generate a, a few different kind of columns here. So we can have a certain period, 
Uh, so I could say I'm at period zero and then I go to period one. So here's just a quick trick. If you have two different numbers and there's following a sweet sequence, then you could go to the bottom right. When you get this little plus sign, you could just drag down and you'll notice that the kind of sequence just follows through. Uh, there's other tricks like that that we're going to see along the way. And here you could have your initial amount. So uh, value, we'll call it. And we could say that you start with 100. And then over here, we're going to add like different things like interest rate. And here we have 10%. So let's put it as 0.10 for now. So my formula for this would be the same kind of formula. You want to say that all of this is equal to the amount in the previous year. So this amount here times one plus one plus this interest rate that you've determined. And I'm keeping it simple for now, but as we go, we're just gonna make things more complicated in the sense that there's gonna be more things that you could flex rate, so you don't have to redo the whole process every time. So for now here, I've kind of treated as a specific number, but that number could have been seen elsewhere, so that afterwards, uh, we make all of this simpler. And that it's just easier to tweak a few things and it has an impact on everything that you've established so far. Okay, so once you've established this formula here, then afterwards you want to be able to have this formula carry across. So here I could say that this amount is based on the top amount here. So this is based on B5 uh, times 1 plus D2. But the thing is, if, if I start dragging this down, this B5 will go down as well. As soon as you don't block things off on Excel, it keeps on moving down, which is fine for this value here, but the D2 will now become D3 and there's nothing in the D3 column. So I need to block this off. So how I'm gonna do this is by adding an equal sign. And then here, I could try it out. And there we go. So I could see over one year, 110, 121, 133, and it keeps on going up and up and up. And you could see that this amount is rising rapidly. So this is one way to do it. If I wanna make things more complicated and add different period lengths, so I don't only have it yearly, but I could have it also monthly, I could jump into this uh, file here that I started in the past. And essentially all that I'm doing different here, here as you can notice in my formula, I have this idea that I had the percentage not as 0.10, but actually as 10, but I divide by 100, so it gives the same thing. But this formula here divides by the number of periods per year. Since I only set it as one period per year, it will give me the exact same values that I had in the previous file, uh, which is 100 goes to 110, which goes to 121, and so on and so forth. But what I can do now is I could increase that amount of periods. So what happens to uh, the amount of interest earned if I compound semi-annually instead of annually. So here the thing to notice is that this after one year will be looking after two six months periods and let's see how it compares. So I have 110 and then 121. So let's see how that 110 compares to what we have in period two and 121 compares to what we have in period four. If I change this value over here. So in period two, I could see now that I have 110 and 25, and in period four, I have 121.55. So I could see that the interest earned is greater. So this is one of the things that you have to remember in this whole con concept is that if you compound more often, you'll have a bigger number. Because that whole value of compounding, like if we think of that example of 10% yearly, well, if you were to say, well, that's equivalent to 20% every two years, well, no, because 20% every two years would only give me 120 and not 121 compared to com having 10% every year. And 5% every year, every six months will actually give me more than 121. Well, it's gonna be, give me 121 and 55 cents. So it gives you a bigger amount each time. If I were to make it compounding like every day, I could put it to 365, I'd have to look much lower down on the file and I'd be able to see that it's gonna to lead to an even bigger number, okay? Same thing will go with mortgages. If you have a mortgage where the interest stated 
implies that this is compounded semi-annually or it's compounded monthly will give you a different value and we'll get back to that in the mortgage calculation video coming up next. So another way that we can set this up is to build a schedule. So here I look at the idea of setting up a schedule where I can have like a beginning level of capital plus a level of capital that I invest. So here I'm adding $100 at first and this gives me flexibility to add more money over time and it makes it a little bit more realistic and it's going to be very useful in your file as you're always going to be able to add more money to your savings based on the differential between buying and renting. And in this example here, I could see, well, this is the amount of money that I have, which is my capital I added plus the capital I had at the beginning of the period. And then the amount of interest I earned over that period. And then this is my end of period value. So I could see that these values here are exactly the same as these ones, but this schedule just gives me more flexibility. So overall, what we've learned in this video is the whole idea that time, money has value over time. That compounding makes a difference. The shorter the time period between each time that you compound that you've calculated the interest is going to lead to a bigger number. It's a small difference, but it's substantial over time. And then we learn how to calculate it with equations and then how to input those equations into Excel. The important thing, if you ever start running Excel and you start dragging your formulas across and you see weird things happening, the thing that you have to remember is to use that dollar sign to make sure that you're blocking certain things off. So if I go back to this equation over here, if I look at the dollar sign, I only have it on things that aren't moving, such as my interest rate and the number of periods. But my B4 doesn't have dollar sign because I always want to use the period above. So I want it to become in the following equation bef below B5 and then B6 and B7. So you have to know where to put the dollar signs and where not to put them. So you'll have a series of work to make sure that you master this. And I'll uh, talk about that in class with you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing or joining my class where I guide you to apply and expand on the information found in these videos to real life examples. Have a good day.